Hey guys, so today I'm sharing my homeschool plans for 2020-2021 school year. And it actually is gonna look a lot different. I'm outside right now in our garden behind me. You can see all of the pumpkin that is growing. We've got corn and sunflowers, and I've even got a cotton plant that I'm finding. And that is kind of part of the homeschool plan changes that I'm making. There was a lot that happened last year with COVID and all the stuff going on in our nation. And plus our family might actually move in the middle of the school year. Um, so all of that has just led to me revamping how we do school. I'm keeping a few staples such as our morning basket. And I, I'm gonna share with you what I'm dropping and also some of the things I'm really excited to get to dig into with my kids. So come on inside and I'll give you a tour. And here, you see it? It's a Cinderella pumpkin. So this is our cucumber trellis. If you follow me on Instagram, then I told you about how my neighbor helped me make it because I'm not really the builder. Here are our bell peppers. Here is my, <laughs> my tomato plant that is, I mean, I just seriously have to trim it. I've already trimmed it back once, believe it or not. And it is going nuts. And here's more of the pumpkin going completely. I mean, it's just going crazy. <laughs> it's just nuts, guys. Okay, and then I've got corn here, and then the, my my baby <laughs> of this whole project is this cotton plant here. So one of the big challenges as I look at this coming year is that we have a two-year-old who gets into everything and screams a lot. So that has really affected it affected how the end of school looked last year. And it also is affecting how I'm planning for next year. We, I know that I have to pull back how much content I'm going to be reading with my older kids. And I also am trying to make more things that we can all do together, such as the garden that I just showed you. We are trying to get um, some bunnies for my children to be able to have full care of. And we're also trying to, <laughs> we're trying to attract some wild birds right now, and we are not having much luck with that. Um, so all of these things are a little bit more what I would say lifestyle changes and will help bring everybody in and make it so that we're learning as we go and don't have to just be sitting and listening to me read or reading a book in order to be learning. It's more, I'm trying to move it so that our lifestyle is not school, but that we have a more robust lifestyle and that school is kind of a consequence or like an aside um, that happens during our day and not like the whole life. And part of this kind of came about because I got really bored at the end of last year and I really felt like I needed a change and I really wasn't sure what that was gonna look like. So I'm gonna dive into, I'll give you some flip throughs of some of the content that I'm gonna be doing with my kids independently. They're, it's kind of like they're all kind of getting a, a overhaul on their skill work, um, but that's so that their skill work can be a shorter period of time during the day. And also when they are doing it, it, I, I, they're just getting more bang for their buck. Some of the stuff that we did last year tend to draw out and was a little bit more boring, such as we did Simply Charlotte Mason's, um, their spelling wisdom, which is you're studying a passage and we did it throughout the week. And then you have a test for your uh, dictation test on Friday. And it just got really boring and mundane. And we are switching over to Wordly Wise, which is a vocabulary 
curriculum that it's just a, a lot of fun and you're playing with these words in different ways. And therefore it's like, they're getting the vocabulary. They're getting a little bit of spelling and I'll still do the spelling test on Friday, but I'm going to do it with the words. They're going to be more challenging words from wordly wise and in the hopes that this will be a little bit more stimulating and can be put back on my students a little bit more and not be as me like driving them to do it. So as I look at my schedule for next year, I see that I do have this toddler who is a little bit wild. So we are really needing to kind of modify our schedule so that we can enjoy her, enjoy the season that she's in. But also for me, I feel like I've added too many books and have really not been allowing for a lifestyle that is not just school. I feel like our school is our life and that has really gotten boring. And I want more for my children. I want more for myself than a day that's just always revolving around getting school done. So what I'm doing is modifying our week so that we have two days a week that we do morning time. Now that means that I'm doing maybe a more full morning time on those two days. Every morning we do Bible and I will do a read aloud. That's five days a week. And then five days a week we do skill work. That is reading, writing, and math, kind of depending on the level of the student. You know, one, the first grader is going to do much less. The fifth grader is going to do much more and spend more time doing those things. And then on the other three days that we're not doing morning time, we are going to be focusing on one, we're going to have a family project. This semester, our family project is to start a podcast and it's going to be geared around my nature study hacking business and my kids are going to join me in helping select which animals we're going to study and then we're going to create a podcast about individual either animals or plants that they're really interested in and we're going to tell the folk tale about that particular animal and we'll have a poem and we are just going to have a lot of fun trying to figure out how to create this podcast, how to make it sound interesting. And this is something called project based learning. And it's something that I learned about from a high school teacher, um, in Palo Alto, California. She has a really robust journalism program for her high school. So obviously I don't have high school students. I have elementary students, but I do have a journalism background. That's why I'm sitting here speaking with you is because I have a passion for research. I love sharing what I know, and I really want to be orienting our homeschool to be serving others. And that seemed like the most practical way that I could be leading my children in their work to be thinking about others because we communicate, of course, to speak to another person. We're not just learning to read and write so that we're great readers and writers sitting at our homes, not talking to anyone. So that is kind of our pod podcast project. I'm hoping we will launch it in the fall and I'll let, I'll let you know how that goes. I'm sure I'll post that here. So the other element is, remember I had said that I really want us to be service oriented. And what that just means is that we're thinking about ways that we can love people within our community. So another thing that we're going to be doing is making a larger priority in bringing people meals and also practicing hospitality in our home. So it's been really hard because of COVID to do that. And that has been something that I have really missed, but we also live pretty far outside of town. So it's been difficult for me to feel like, oh, I can just host people and you know, they have to drive so far, but I'm just putting all of my worries aside and saying it is a greater priority to love people well and 
when we have people in our home, like that's such a great, easy way for my kids to serve and love. And again, they're going to help me plan. They're going to help me cook, like all of these things that involve them more. And again, I'm counting this as education. So now I'm going to move over and I'm going to do a flip through. I'm going to show you how I'm organizing each of my terms and I'll do a flip through some of the new books that we have geared up for some of my students. So come take a look. Okay, so here is my morning basket for term one. Term one is 12 weeks. You can see I have my morning, my, my book house. I have a ch children's homer. This is an illustrated biography of George Washington Carver. We have another biography that one of my students is going to be uh, reading about him, but I love all of Cheryl Harness's biographies and they're all done by the National Geographic Society. Then we've been going through this book, Poems to Learn by Heart. This is by, this is put together by Caroline Kennedy and they're really funny. Oh, I just lost my place. <laughs> I picked up these books, the A History of Us, and I love them. I've been reading through another version and I really wanted to get the kids exposed to more of a narrative for what happened after the Civil War. We've studied the Civil War already. There'll be some Civil War books that we've got, but because of all the things going on right now in our culture, I felt like it would be really important to read about the First and Second World Wars because in my, my thought was that's the most similar to this time period that we're dealing with. So this is Tales from Shakespeare. We'll pick, I think I'm just going to do one this, this term. We're still reading through Plutarch's Lives for Boys and Girls. And once we get through the other poetry book, we're going to study Edward Lear, who has really funny poems and lots of, just lots of fun stuff. I love these books. We're doing Durr. I love them because they're really engaging biographies and they also have really nice large prints of the art and kind of gives a little bit of a background. So I'm going to be doing, it's honestly, it's just, it's easier for me to do a book. My friend Rebecca at a humble place also has some really great artist picture study resources. And then I've got these two books. This is because we just need to keep learning our manners. And we're finishing up Enid Blyton's Nature Lovers book. And this is a book that actually they have these walks, first walk in June, first walk in July. We just learned so much from reading through this book that I want to keep it up. Okay, now I'm going to show you our flip through real quick. So this is just the packet that I bought of all of these Rod and Staff preschool books. These are awesome because they've got coloring pages. They've got things that the little ones can cut out. They're not very expensive and it's something that I can give each of the ch my younger ones to do while the older ones are doing school. Okay, so this is Wordly Wise. This is book five. I have book four for my fourth grader. We don't start this type of grammar or vocabulary or anything until fourth grade. First, second, and third grade are strictly, they're learning to read. They're learning to form their letters. They're getting read aloud too. So let's just look through here real quick so that you can get an idea of how awesome these books are. So this is 
the definition. So the first day I will be like, okay, read through lesson one and that's it. And they will do this section, find, finding meaning. So they're going to read this and then this is how they'll start to mess around with it. They start to play with the words. So choose two phrases to form a sentence that correctly uses a word from word list one, write each sentence in the space provided. So then you're trying to figure out which words need to go together. So they mess around with that on one day. Sometimes this takes two, sometimes three sittings um, for them to get through because they're messing around with it and it is a lot of brain power. So I will give them maybe a time li limit of 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes if the child is into it, but probably no more than 10 minutes. Okay, and then we move on the next day, just the right word, improve each of the following sentences by crossing out the bold phrase and replacing it with a word or a form of a word from our word list. So they're gonna go back to the word list. So they're just engaging with these words in a lot of different ways. No, 1C, circle the letter or the letters to each correct answer. A question may have more than one correct answer. And the first one is, which of the following could be an obstacle? Lack of money, a fallen tree, poor eyesight, a pleasant voice. And then again, they're playing with the words in yet another way. Circle two synonyms in each group of four words. So they're needing to circle this, the things that are the two words that are the same. And again, I may just have them do one section per day so as not to exhaust them. All right. So then they're going to read this passage because they've already, you know, messed around with these words for the last few days. I'm going to read this passage and then answer some questions in the form of a sentence. If a question does not contain a vocabulary word from the lesson word list, use one in your answer. So again, I probably split this into two, maybe three days. I might just say like do question one through five one day, do question six through 10 the next day and do question 11 through 15 another day. I'm not worried about how quickly they go through this. So then they're on to lesson two. Lesson one, it looks like it might take one to two weeks, just depending on um, how quickly they can go through it. Then I also have pen time, which I really love. And this is just focusing on, we're just working on forming our letters more neatly because my students struggle with that. And I also want to get them back to, and they wanted to get back to cursive. So this is another thing where it's one page of just neat writing. And I would never assign more than one page. I might even break it up into two pages, even for an older student, because I would prefer them to be neat than be sloppy and just get, get through it. So this is just good copy work. Um, but again, we're focusing on neatness. And then this is the daily grams. And this is another one that's just one sheet of paper that they would only do uh, for one day. And this is really how I do grammar right now. And my, my fourth grader and my fifth grader will have the same book. My fourth grader obviously will start at the beginning and my fifth grader is on down the ways a little bit, but I'm not getting her new book. She's just gonna finish this book. So they're telling you to capitalize the name of a holiday or a special day. And so they're kind of presenting an idea or a rule, and then they're giving you a way to mess around with it. These can take about 10 minutes, and then I go over them and just, you know, correct it and make sure that they've got it. They do have answers in the back, and depending on the student, they can check their own work. And that's it. That's all I have to share with you about my 2020-2021 school plans for now. You can go check out my Instagram account at Joy Cherick, and there I share 
more details and give, maybe I break up the terms a little bit in more detail if that will help you. Leave a comment and let me know if there's anything else you'd like a flip through or if I left anything out that you really want to know about. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.